So today we're going to be talking about something that is an important part of augmented reality, and that is anchors. And we're going to talk about what an anchor is, how to use an anchor, and how to develop for the specific type of anchor as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back. If you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check my blog posts with other augmented reality videos. You can check out videos on storyline developments, on XAPI, e-learning developments, and everything related there. You can also check out templates on storyline. I have different game templates and customization templates as well. And then XAPI and XAPI video trackers. And then finally, my different courses on Storyline, Captivate, XAPI, and everything like that. Now, I've posted quite a few posts on augmented reality, some how to work with tools like Adobe Aero, and then also how to get 3D assets as well. So if you want to check those out, go ahead and check those out at my blog. However, today I wanted to focus on an important part of augmented reality when you're developing it, and that's anchors. And there's really five different types of anchors that you can use with augmented reality. Now, there may be more, but those are the main ones that I've worked with in developing augmented reality experiences. Now, the type of anchor that you can use will depend on the tool. So something like Unity, you can use uh, an image anchor, you can use horizontal, you can use vertical anchors, and it's a lot more flexible as far as the type of anchors that you can, uh, can use. So world origin, other things like that. Now, something like um, AR kit with Apple, you can use all of those. You can do image and other things, especially when you're working with like Reality Composer. It offers face tracking as like the face as an anchor and other things. But Adobe Aero only allows you to do certain things. So we're going to dive into those as well. So the first anchor that I want to talk about is the world origin anchor. The world origin basically takes your device and when you start an augmented reality experience um, on your device, this becomes the world origin, wherever your device was at. Now, when you create an augmented reality experience, you may be able to place content in Unity or uh, AR kits, Reality Compose, or anything like that. You may place it... Uh, a certain amount of distance from your device. But the anchor itself is actually your device. It's not looking for any horizontal uh, surface. It's not looking for any vertical surface or anything like that. It's basically using your device as uh, an anchor and it's called world origin. Now it does do the X, Y, and Z values. So you can place it like a certain length from this way, that way, up, down, other things like that. And so that is world origin. And so this is an example of me taking my device and you can see that it, it places the world origin and then I can place the square based off of that world origin. Now it will place the origin, world origin, off of where your device initially was when you first started. That's why when you saw in the video, I pulled back that world origin with those three lines stayed where it was and the object was placed from that. So that keep that in mind. Now, the other type of anchor, and probably the most common anchor, is the horizontal and vertical planes. So you, you can recognize a floor, you can recognize a wall, and then you can add experience. So if you and if you experience things like uh, Amazon, where you can see things in real world, or Apple's website, where you want to see the device in the real world, typically they'll use this type of anchor. Well, they'll find a horizontal or vertical anchor and then they'll place the content on there. Also with like um, different things like um, the little cities that you may see in some examples as well, they'll use the horizontal plane and then they'll build the city there and some, some depending on the tool, some will actually even recognize like an edge if it's on a table and anything that goes over the edge will actually fall. And I've seen a great example from Apple on that little interactive game that they can play with, uh, with other people and that will use the table as kind of the, the board to bounce balls off of and stuff. So here's one example of the this farm where the farm recognized the horizontal plane. And then it added this farm around it. And then I can actually take this plane and animations and this interactive stuff. And it, I can interact with that. But it first of all has to anchor on this horizontal plane. 
And that's really the key is your experience has to anchor to something inside of the real world. And so you have to have one of these different types of anchors somewhere in order to really present this type of experience. All right, so the next one and probably another more common one is the image anchor. Being able to recognize an image. So if you have an image somewhere and you take out your phone and you scan that image, kind of like a QR code, then it will build the experience around that image. So that's common if you basically take your phone out and then you can have more information about it. You see this more often in like stores and everything like that where uh, it gives you more information about that. So this is a pretty common one. Zappar does this. Zappar does the plane, the horizontal and the vertical planes as well, but Zappar will do images. They actually do a lot of their own QR codes that will trigger the augmented reality experience around it as well. So the other one is face anchor, and I just love this guy's face. I mean, come on, but it's uh, the face anchor. So it'll recognize the face and Spark AR from Facebook actually does this probably the best that I've seen and it will take your face into account and then it will even recognize emotions and it will trigger different things based off of your emotion. So a lot of the times this is used in like Instagram or Snapchat or something like that um, and then to build kind of those funny poses. But if you think about it with learning, how can we do that with learning? Maybe, you know, seeing what you look like with a helmet on uh, when you're going into some type of service area or something like that, or even recognizing mood as well, and then serving up content based off of that mood. Maybe there's something like that. So that's really what it does is it will uh, recognize your face and it will add additional content to that. And so some, some of them do better than others. Again, probably the best one, the best tool that I've seen for the face anchor is the Spark AR by Facebook. All right, so the next one is 3D objects. So we essentially could take any 3D object that we have, could be a phone, could be you know one of these objects in, my, in the back here, and you could scan that object. So that's the first step, is you actually have to scan the object. And there's different scanners depending on what tool that you're working with. So this one is uh, one by Apple, and this is using AR kit. And you have to go around the object and you scan and you'll see the yellow box as soon as it recognizes enough information. And those yellow dots around that object is basically information that's being registered about that object. So once you scan that, you can actually export it out and then you can use that inside of like Reality Composure or AR Kit or um, if you're using something like Vuforia as well, they have a specific scanner and then you can build experiences around that. So here's an example, as soon as I launch it, it will scan the object and then it will add the 3D content. It's a little bit dark, but it will add the 3D content. So this is, I mean, so many possibilities here. If you take your phone out and you go through like a museum or something and you scan objects, you can get more information or technicians on site, if they scan an object, they can get more information. I mean, performance support, so many possibilities there to get the right information at the right time. And I mean, that part really gets me excited to be able to scan it. Now, some scan tools will actually do better than others. In fact, Apple's releasing one fairly soon uh, to be able to scan 3D objects and then even make those virtually um, as well. So there's a lot more of improvement that's coming in this area, but this, this really gets me excited, especially in the area of performance support. And that's the this part right here, is if you need to scan an object, and this is really not specifically related to anchors, but you could actually have a 3D object in the real world, and you could scan it, and then you can use that inside of your augmented reality as well. So different tools will do different things. This one, I believe, is Vuforia that allows you to place an object in kind of a great gray area and then it will scan the object and then you can actually bring it in. Now sometimes you need to create like a light box situation where you have uh, kind of a turntable that you're able to take the camera and turn the object and to really get all that information. And this is also helpful when you're actually doing the 3D object scan and you're going to trigger things around the 3D object. You may have something like this where it's really well lit uh, gray background so it's not capturing any other type of information or anything like that. So those are some of the anchors that you can use to build your augmented reality experience. 
So you really need something to anchor your experience and then you can build on top of that. You can build content around that anchor, around the image or 3D object or a horizontal plane or a vertical plane. And so it's really important to understand anchors, first of all, before you get into building the content. And if you want to check out how to build some of that content, check out my website at learningdojo.ninja and you can check out how to uh, use Adobe Arrow, find 3D objects as well. If you need to find 3D objects, you can also check out Adobe Dimension to help you create 3D objects if you're not experienced in Maya or anything like that. So go ahead and check out my blog for more information like that. You can also check out my courses at learningdojo.ninja. Thanks everyone for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.